KUAM News Headlines, presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adai Tano Program. The all-new 2018 Kona by Hyundai, available at Cars Plus. IP&E Fueling Excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm Loving It, and King's Restaurant, located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Ahead on primetime, the man accused of kidnapping and badly beating a woman makes his first court appearance. Plus, the autopsy results are undetermined. The death of an elderly woman in Dededo remains a mystery. And a high-ranking cabinet member of the Trump administration makes a stopover in the territory. We'll tell you why he's here. Holiday and good evening. It caused a social media uproar over the holiday weekend. The suspect, Brian Kevin Cruz, appearing in court today in shackles and heavily guarded. Cruz stands accused of kidnapping and brutally beating a woman known to him. Part of the alleged incident caught on camera. Here's more from what happened inside the courtroom. 29-year-old Brian Kevin Cruz making his first court appearance since his arrest on Monday. All right, good afternoon, sir. Can you tell me your name, please? You need to speak up, all right, sir. Brian Cruz. All right, thank you, Mr. Cruz. Cruz's image, specifically this surveillance footage, was heavily circulated over the three-day weekend. The woman shown is being wrapped in a headlock before she is shoved into the driver's seat. The video was recorded on Friday afternoon. She was found the following day near a church by her home. Court documents state she was beaten black and blue and that swelling to her eyes made it difficult for her to see. The victim, a 25-year-old woman, told police she had been trying to end her relationship with Cruz and she was trying to calm him down, but she was scared of him. Shortly after being taken against her will, she told police he hit her approximately 30 times and she was in and out of consciousness. Cruz was captured on Monday. Though he told police the victim wanted to go with him, prosecutor Andrew Warlamont reported to the court otherwise. The, the defendant said that he was capable of killing the victim before he forced her into the car and also uh, he made a threat to kill her and her family uh, before he released her. We believe this is an extremely serious case uh, and that the defendant is a very real threat to the community. Court documents state Cruz told police they went driving around the island and stayed in a motel. Because he knew there was video of his car circulating on social media, he told police he ditched the sedan and his quote-unquote crew provided him with another car. The suspect's car was found on a beach. The interior burnt and blood seen on the passenger side. When confronted about the victim's injuries, court documents stated he, quote, gets out of hand, end quote, and that they argued, quote, like any couple would, end quote. Cruz is charged with kidnapping, aggravated assault, family violence, and felonious restraint. Each charge is accompanied with the notice of a felony on felony release. A bench warrant for Cruz was out at the time of his arrest on Monday. A return hearing in the kidnapping case is scheduled for September 14th. It's yet another mysterious death. The autopsy report shows the cause and manner of death for a woman found dead in Machechi last Friday is undetermined. That's right. The discovery of her body no doubt bringing fear to the northern village. It's the second suspicious death in Dededo happening in recent months. Here's our Carmen Talahi with the story. Two separate deaths in Guam's largest village and still no suspects made known to the public. The most recent death reported last week along Machechi Street in Dededo. According to the chief medical examiner, the cause of the elderly Korean woman's passing was, quote, undetermined. Though he did tell media her ankles were bound with tape, pointing to evidence of foul play. Months earlier, in the same village, 15-year-old Tamika Nauta was found dead in her home. Her death ruled a homicide, putting residents on alert. I'm concerned. I'm even concerned going to my car at night. I position my key. Should anybody be hiding somewhere? You know, make sure that I have defense on my side. Expect the unexpected. Dedito Mayor Melissa Savar says her office is working closely with GPD to solve multiple open cases in Dedito, including a deadly auto pet. But even then, leads from the community and joining your neighborhood watch group can help GPD catch the culprits. We do as much as we could. Most homes, a lot of homes are gated homes. Uh, we have dogs, mm -hmm. you know, to protect us. We have cameras on our homes. But um, 
You know, it's just about knowing who your neighbors are and knowing what happens in your surroundings. Ultimately, she says officials are working together to get justice for the untimely deaths of these beloved residents. These victims are, you know, they were not prepared for these incidences to happen to them. And they, they have family members who dearly love them and miss them because they're not here anymore. So please give the information to the proper authority so that we can close these cases and, you know, have peace uh, for both the victims and the families. If you have any information on these cases, you can call GPD at 472-8911, Guam Crime Stoppers at 477-HELP, or even join the Dededo Neighborhood Watch Group by calling the mayor at 632-5203. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Terlahi. Well, his death has been ruled an accident. An autopsy performed late Tuesday afternoon determined longtime UOG staffer Angel Chrysostomo Petros died of a broken neck. As reported, a security guard discovered Petros on campus on Sunday morning. He was reportedly working an event the day prior. The Manila campus now mourning his loss. A memorial service is forthcoming. A car salesman is being behind bars charged with attempted criminal sexual conduct. 34-year-old Francisco LG Francisco allegedly told the female customer he had a dream of the two of them having sex. He then allegedly asked her to perform fellatio before unzipping his pants and grabbing her hand to make her touch his privates. Court documents state he continued to make aggressive advances on the victim, including climbing into the passenger side and reclining the seat. Atkins Kroll Inc. in response to the incident has released the following statement, quote, We are shocked by these allegations because we have a robust, robust screening process that includes background checks for all the employee applicants. We also conduct continuous human relations training for all employees, end quote. The man whose pit bull had a tumor the size of a basketball makes his first appearance in court Wednesday. Melkor Anselin was recently indicted for first-degree animal cruelty as a third-degree felony and animal abandonment as a petty misdemeanor. These disturbing photos provided by Guam Animals in Need show Thor, the pit bull with a 15-pound tumor on his leg. Anselin allegedly knew his dog needed medical attention since January. In June, animal control officers had to confiscate Thor from his owner, but it was too late to save the pit bull who then had to be euthanized. Anselin will remain on pretrial release on the condition he stay away from domesticated animals. His next court hearing is September 12th. Now to an update on that early morning crash in Mingilao that sent multiple people to the hospital. It happened around 7.30 a.m. along Route 10 near FD. MS, that's Father Duenas Memorial School. Police say the driver of a Mitsubishi Lancer heading south went into the oncoming lane before colliding into a Toyota pickup and a Highlander. The driver in the Lancer was unconscious and not responding. That man had to be rushed to GMH along with the driver in the pickup truck. A female passenger inside the Highlander was taken to GMH with non-life-threatening injuries while two minors inside one of the cars made it out unharmed. Manila Mayor Alan Angukta it says it all too, it's all too familiar with the problems on this stretch of road. Uh, it, it, I don't know how many times we're going to do this, and I don't want to do it at, when something else ha happens, like I said, when someone should pass. And it, it, they're going to pass in that, that same area, and I'm going to continue to advocate for that crosswalk or that, that, that traffic light up there. Some kind of deterrence in that general area, and it seems to be in that general area. For now, no word on their condition. GPD's Highway Patrol Division is investigating. Authorities have yet to release updates on that tourist who was pulled from the waters off Tangisan Beach Tuesday afternoon. As reported, officials searched the waters and shore for several hours after a call came in of a missing swimmer. Officials say the Korean tourist was snorkeling with a friend inside the reef when he was swept out. The unidentified man was unresponsive and unconscious when rescue crews located him. He was rushed to Naval Hospital via the Navy's HSC-25 helicopter. The Korean Consulate Agency has also been contacted in this case, but again, no word on his condition. They aren't leaving without a fight. GFT will be filing appeals in response to the notice of layoffs at the Guam Power Authority. The filing will be sent to the Civil Service Commission for those affected employees. The Federation also writing to the legislature and the, con 
Solid Aid Commission on Utilities regarding their concerns of these impending layoffs. As we reported, new technology advances resulted in the layoff notices for certain employees from the GPA's meter reader and customer service electrician section. It would go into effect on October 28th. However, GFT representatives say, quote, they will fight to protect the jobs of these working families who are for all practical purposes, being fired from their classified employment with the GPA and the government of Guam without any good reason or cause, end quote. A Trump cabinet member is on island. Take a look at this video our crew sent to the newsroom late today. Pol police escorting Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke to the governor's office at Adelaide. Governor Cavill greeting him before talks and welcoming him to the territory. Now, several high-ranking officials also participating in that discussion. Zinke is on a brief stopover before heading to the Pacific Forum meeting in Nauru. He's me his meeting with Governor Cavill and cabinet members has been scheduled to discuss key federal territorial issues from the hospital to the H2B approval process. Well, stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News. Giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices. Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats. And via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. When we face an uncertain path, when we struggle with life's challenges, and when the unexpected happens, it's a beautiful day. We rely on the people we trust, oh, oh, oh. It's a beautiful who we can always count on. It's a beautiful day. and the ones who give us the most care throughout the years. Rely on Calvo's Select Care to give you the comfort and security you need it's a beautiful day. wherever you are. Calvo's Select Care, health care that's always there for you. Welcome back. A renewed request to hand count the primary election results is being discussed at the Guam Election Commission. The request again made by the Democratic gubernatorial team of Frank Hogan Jr. and Alicia Lim Tiaco. The GEC previously denied the hand count request before moving forward with last Saturday's machine recount. That effort resulted in no major changes to the results. We will bring you more from the meeting with whatever the GEC decides on KUAM.com. 
Meanwhile, local pollster and political commentator Dr. Ron McNinch questions the Ugin Lemtiako right in candidacy. Speaking before the Rotary Club on Wednesday, he says, unlike most states, Guam still allows a losing can candidate to run an independent writing campaign, but McNinch has advocated for changing that law. For some odd reason, even though we've suggested it for many years, Guam, our legislature, has never adopted a sore loser law. Sore loser laws only apply to races where people have already tried for that office at the primary. So they don't get to retread it over and over again. Now we can write in anybody, but should people who've already tried at the first round be allowed to continue to play? And most jurisdictions in the United States would say no. McNinch also pushed back on a lawsuit by Ken Leon Guerrero of Guam Citizens for Public Accountability, which seeks to count crossover and other uncounted ballots. McNinch says the law is clear that the votes should not be counted. And the reason is uh, California Democrat Party versus Jones in 2000 is the, is the U.S. Supreme Court case that threw out the ability for people to cross over and have crossover votes count. And I hope whichever judge on Guam gets it, uh, will immediately refer to that case and say, you know, take your circus tent and pack up, buddy, and move on. McNinch, of course, is a University of Guam professor whose students often conduct election polls. Well, it's that time again to bring you more candidates who will be making their way to the general election this November. Joining our Jason Salas on D18 tonight will be Democratic Senatorial Candidate Dr. Kelly Marsh Titano and Republican Senatorial Candidate Julius Santos. It's your chance to interact with the candidates, watch our live stream on Facebook, and post your questions in the comment section so we can get it to them. Then join us on the after party. We bring you Adrian Cruz, Kate Baltasar, and Ricky Orsini, our analysts in studio, to talk everything election and about tonight's candidates, how they did on the show. D18 Tonight is coming up right after primetime. The FAA has awarded the Guam International Airport Authority $15.9 million to construct a new aircraft rescue and firefighting building. The current facility was built back in the 1970s and was transferred from the military to the airport in 1996. The news comes as the airport gears up to be assessed during its annual FAA certification inspection later this month. It's then they will be tested in 123 fields of federal compliance. Now to regional headlines with our partners at KSPN 2 News. Half a day Guam, here are the headlines for CNMI. General discussions are happening about potential student housing here in Siapan. The Northern Marianas Trade Institute is discussing plans to expand. There is a new legislation that is going to be introduced in the Senate, where uh, Senator Kiruga is working on it, to change uh, the uh, nonprofit into a public corporation so that when that happens, then the government will help, help more the, the uh, uh, trade school, so we could also expand to Rhoda and Tinian. And if more funding is approved, the NMTI will be able to look into providing potential housing. We do have a master plan, and they have designated a land. The legislature uh, did a resolution uh, looking at land in the southern part of Saipan to build the future uh, facility for NMTI. Once we have that, we plan to have dormitory to bring people from rural Antinium for other, also other people who would like to and possibly make it bigger so that students who want to go to NMC could be able to use that also to go to NMC. See. This is just uh, in the very preliminary discussion period of identifying what types of facilities we need for the college in order to appeal to a broader market of international students. So one of those things is making sure that we have modern facilities. NMTI Chief Executive Officer Agnes McFeeders says there is enough land to provide up to 200 rooms depending on how the master plan goes. We're trying to get to meet again with the uh, legislature to see whether that's a possibility for us to be able to get in this new fiscal year so we can start the, the, mess, the planning and then the a and &E, you know, and then the construction. For more news, visit SiapanTV.com. For KSPN2 News, I'm Ashley McDowell. And local sports is coming up after the break, but first a look at your island weather.
easy is it to earn reward points using the Alpha Plus app? Here, let me show you. Simply register with the all new Alpha Plus app and earn reward points while making purchases at your favorite stores you already shop at. Just present the app to any authorized representative to earn